Hi, I'm Cheryl. We're going to use the Oh So Succulent um, stamp set and do this watercolor card today. And I'm also going to show you how to do a fork bow. So let's get started on this card. I have a lot of stuff to cover with you. We need a piece of Knight of Navy cardstock. And that's five and a half by eight and a half. It's scored and folded at four and a quarter. We're going to use a piece of watercolor paper. And this is cut five by three and three quarters. And I'm going to leave that right here because we'll be using that first off. Piece of Whisper White. That's five by three and three quarters. And a piece of Sweet Sugar Plum. And that's five by three and three quarters. We need, of course, we need our Oso Succulent um, stamp set. Uh, if you're going to get the stamp set, might as well get the dies too. So get the bundle and you'll save yourself a little money because they're, they're cheaper when you buy them together. And we're going to use this flower or succulent the large succulent and then this little succulent here and right here is this little um, arched um, I don't know what it is like a little flower bud coming off we're going to use that and then from our Advent Garden stamp set which is on the celebration we're going to use happy birthday wishes and to someone who makes others so happy. You'll need your snail. You'll need your Stampin' Dimensionals. Your Aqua Painter. A pair of nice sharp scissors. And we'll be using Knight of Navy. Perfect Plum. And Smoky Slate inks. So let's get started on this card. And this is our piece of watercolor paper. Let me put these aside. Oh, and we have, um, if you've never seen these before, these are the cutest things. They're called bonbons. And the Lion Brand Yarns puts makes these. And they come, look, you get all these little um, skeins of of yarns that the um, this is the cotton set and they have there's 28 yards on each of these little skeins so you're not going to knit an or crochet an afghan with them but they're they're great for crafting because it's just all these great colors and just a you know just a little taste of them and they're about the cotton is about the thickness of um, baker's twine and then they also have acrylic ones, which let me show you some of these. Look at all these great colors. But um, you can see I went a little crazy with them. But I do that sometimes. And that's just a little bit thicker. And on my original, my original card I made, um, I used the cotton. We're going to use the acrylic. I think this blue would be pretty on the on the card, so we'll use that when we make the bow. Okay, now on to the stamping. Our largest succulent, we're going to use the Knight of Navy ink. And we're going to do two of these. And they're going to be just a little, if you grid this out, into four sections. We're going to have one right here and then one right here just a little higher. So just below the bottom or just below the halfway line that's where we're going to stamp one and we're going to stamp the other one just a little bit up from that. So we'll ink that up with our Knight of Navy. Right about there and then I'm going to turn it so it looks a little different 
and we're going to take our other one and we're just going to try to get the petals in between if you overlap a little bit it's not going to be that big of a deal so don't make yourself crazy over it all right so i'm going to close this up we're going to go back to the knight of navy later but for now i'm closing it up now we'll go on to our um what was this again oh, perfect plum and we'll use the medium succulent we're going to put one we're going to just nestle that in right between these two navy ones down the bottom and you see i did overlap a little bit that's okay don't worry about that and then one will go up here right between them and then i'm going to turn it around a little bit and we're going to put another one right next to it right there and we're done with that stamp and the perfect plum for the moment we will be pulling that back in too and now we have our um, our smoky slate and we're going to be using the the little um, succulent and we'll ink him up one will go right down the bottom here there we go and we're going to put another one Let's see we'll turn him around a little bit we're going to put another one up the top here okay and that's it for that guy and now we're going to use that little um arched branch type thing And that will go up on the top here. We're going to put it right, right here between the, um, the little gray one, the little smoky slate flower um, succulent and, and there. So we're going to have that arched up towards the top of the paper. And there we go. So our stamping is done. Let me just, um, yeah, I'll close that up right now. Now we're going to take our aqua painter. And you want to get a good amount of water going in there. We want it pretty wet. It's kind of drippy wet. And we're going to start on the outside of our flowers and we're just going to, we're just going to, mush over them and wipe some of that off and we'll do the gray ones the smoky slate ones okay and over this one and you'll see your your ink is going to start to to bleed actually let me get a little more water down here and there we go And we're not done with the water coloring on here yet. Because I want some layers of color in here. Okay. But it's, it's getting to be a little bit more exciting already. So I'm going to set this aside. I want to let this dry just a tiny bit. Clean out my brush a little. There we go. And we'll make our bow now. Now you probably saw this comb here. And you thought, oh, what'd she do? Comb her hair and forget to put her comb away? No, that's what we're going to use to make the, the bow. They call these fork bows. But you can use anything that has teeth on it. You could hear, use like a hair pick. I have this um, wooden comb I had to have. And it is no good for combing hair. But, um... It spent most of its life in my bathroom just being kind of a decorative piece, but it makes a, it's wonderful for making a bow. So you need something that has an even number of prongs. 
on it. Okay, I'm going to be using four, but you could do six or eight, however many um, you would need to, it, it would make different size bows, so however many you would need, um, that's what you'll, you'll use. And let me get this up a little closer here so you can see better. So I'm going to take my yarn, and I have my four bows marked off with this washi tape, and I'm just going to hold this piece leave myself a tail here and I'll wrap around just like this that fourth prong and back to my first prong okay so you see I have one two three four prongs wrapped and we're going to have like a Z shape do you see the Z we have one and then behind it comes across and back down. Now we're gonna, I'm going to, I'm working off the spool here. So I'm gonna cut off a piece. I'm gonna give myself, oh, probably four inches to work with. We're going to take this piece and stick this down. Huh? If it cooperates, we're gonna stick this down between the prongs to the back. We'll bring it up and now we're going to tie it off. We'll tie one knot and pull that good and tight and tie another knot. And then we're just going to take our our bow and just slide it right off. And there we have a a perfect little bow to put on the card. So, okay, now this should be dry enough. So we want to do a lay we want to kind of layer color on here. Where can I put this that I won't lose? Oh, I'll put it right there. So we'll go back into our inks and give them a squeeze so we have a nice little puddle to work with. And I'm going to start with the um, with the smoky slate that's the lightest color on here. And I'm just going to take that and I'm just going to just dab some color on. That way you have the very light from when we blended it the first time from just the ink that was stamped and now we're we're just adding another layer here of color and I'll I'll put some in this little branchy thing here too just wipe this off a little and we'll go on to our perfect plum up some of the ink and just dab that on and remember when when this dries it's going to be a little bit lighter so I'm just dabbing it on but I'm going to keep towards the center of the flower that way it just gives you a little bit of um, a little shading there okay and then the last one And I thought it'd be cool to have a little bit of the perfect plum in the in these navy ones too. So I add a little bit of that there. But I want more of the knight of navy in there too. So let me just wipe that out. And we'll go on to the knight of navy. Oop. And we'll just pick up some of that. Add that in there and you know people overthink this water coloring water color I was told is nothing more than a series of happy accidents okay so accidents I'm good at I can do accidents 
I actually took some some classes, um, painting classes, and but the the woman that taught them was mostly dealt with um, acrylics, which is a whole different ball game than um, than watercolor. So now we have. We have all these little dots, and I did those in the smoky slate. They look almost like um, like water splotches, but well, I'll show you those. And that's oh, that's from the um, that's a stamp from the Avant Garden too. That's these little dotty things here. So we're gonna. We're gonna dot it up, and and this is nice. It's got all different different shaped. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but there's all different shapes there, so you can really you can turn this around and really get in between your flowers. I really liked using this. Okay, so there's some, and we can get. Look at this, it goes, it'll go right around that little flower. And we'll do another one up here around this flower. And then we can turn it and this just goes, it's like it was made to go between these flowers, the way I put them on the page. And let's see. I'm just going to, this is where, where not stamping straight down comes in handy. I'm coming in. I'm going to come in at an angle because I don't want the dots to go all the way to the edge of the page. I just want I just want some. So you can do that. That's perfectly legal to do. You can use your stamps any way you feel like using them. Okay, so where did we put that little bow? I'm going to wait, though. I'll wait till I get everything all put together. Okay, so our water coloring and stamping our little dots is finished. And now we're going to tear the edge of the, the paper. Now this is the same size as... the piece that's going to layer under it. Okay, so when I tear this paper I know that I want to have you know, about a quarter of an inch showing. So just about a quarter inch from the edge to start tearing that paper. And I'm tearing it um, from the front backwards but if you turn your paper over, you see that you have a whole different look on the back, and it's a lot more raggedy. So if you like that look better, turn your paper over to the blank side and tear that way. But but I want just I don't want it quite so raggedy. Okay, and I don't like the I don't like the corners to be real squared, so. There we go. There's a fairly rounded corner. And we just keep tearing all the way around. <clears throat> so, so don't don't get yourself crazy about water coloring. It should be it should be something that's fun. And I think the less you think about it, the better off you are. It comes out so much better. The only thing you really need to think well, with watercolor, and this is what really makes a difference from from working in acrylics, you have to you have to think about where you want your white spaces. Because once you put put your paint or your ink down, then that the opportunity to put a white space there is gone. Acrylics, you just put some, some white acrylic paint over it and you've got a white spot. 
I don't want to get that off of there. That was just a little too squared for me. And so we're going to put that down here, but I'm going to um, use my stamp in dimensionals. I'm going to pop that up a little bit. Uh, we put all this work into this water coloring. We want to pop it up where people are going to really notice it. Uh, Stampin' Up! has uh, has a watercolor paper and it's a nice heavy, I think it's a 140 pound uh, watercolor paper. Watercolor paper goes by by pounds per I don't know how much. But the higher the number, the, the thicker the paper is. Um, I noticed though there's is a, is a cold press, which means there's texture to it. And now that, that's great for a lot of applications. I like that. I like the cold press when I'm watercoloring. But um, I also have some hot press paper, and that's what I use today. And hot press just means that that it went they I guess they heat it, and but it's a smooth watercolor paper. There's like hardly any texture on this paper I'm using. But either one will work. You just get just a slightly different look with it. Because if you have if you have a cold press paper and there's texture on it, well, your your paint or your ink in this case is going to settle down into the into the texture a little bit. Okay, so now we'll put that on our piece of paper there. Now it's backed with our sweet sugar plum and that just pulls out these flowers and makes it look nice. Okay, and we can put this on our Knight of Navy and I'll use snail for that. Just going to go around the edges. Because we have our our watercolor here popped up, let's open the card up. Make sure I'm I'm putting it right. We want that little um, branchy thing to stick out the top, and we'll have about a quarter inch showing all the way around there. Okay, so let's get our Whisper White in here and our Knight of Navy ink. And we can do our sentiments. Let's see. Will I fit on this block? Oh, I'm not thinking so. I need another block. There we go. Because I want to put... Oh, darn, you know what? I wanted to put... That's why they won't fit on that block I had out. I was going to put happy birthday wishes at the top here. And I don't know how that's going to work now that that's not going to work. Nope. So we'll put it both on the inside. If you want your happy birthday wishes on the outside of your card, like I was thinking I was going to do, um, I was going to stamp it right here. But now that I have this popped up on dimensionals, I'm not going to be able to do that. Oh, poo. Oh, well. Talk about happy accidents, huh? Here's another one. So we'll just put that on here. And I'll try to line them up as best I can. I like to do that. Well, I have to do that on the block because they're both on here. Okay. Let's see. Okay, that looks pretty good. Well, having them do double decked like this will keep me from doing my usual uh, rock and roll <laughs> type of stamping. 
But rocking and rolling is not always a good thing. Okay, so we'll press straight down and straight up. And that's pretty good, except I got a little blob of ink there. So you know what I'm going to do? Look at that. I should probably have used my paper cutter, but that's okay. I'm just going to cut that off. Yeah, a paper cutter would have been a lot better. And I'll put this on the inside of my card. With my snail. And we'll center that. And now we can put our little bow on. So I'll just take my Tombow glue. Which I didn't tell you you were going to need. Let's see. I want to right about here I think like right between the two blue flowers so I'll put my glue down on the paper and just put it press my bow down and I'll trim up the ends here just a little bit And we're done. So, there's the original card. There's the one that we just made. They're very much alike, aren't they? But they're just a little bit different. So, if you've liked my video, be sure to press that like button down below. If you'd like to see more, hit subscribe. Oh, and by the way, the people that have subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. It's so encouraging to see people really like my videos and want to see more of them. So, and if you'd like to shop with me, you can do that either through my Facebook page or my website. And as always, all the materials and supplies I've used will be listed down below there. So y'all take care. Stay safe and happy stamping.